Hey, once again, good evening, everyone. We will get started with our press conference. Uh, just a reminder, if you would, please utilize the raise your hand feature to get your questions in the queue for our student athlete, and uh, we'll get you in the queue to ask your question. If you would also please be so kind to identify yourself by name as well as your media affiliation. With that being said, we'll get started. Uh, Ari, if you could please start us out with an opening statement about today's game. I am extremely proud of my teammates and my coaches. Um, we just beat a great team that's well coached by the legendary Gary Blair. But I'm really excited, and we're peaking at the right time and, you know, ready to make some more history. Thank you so much for that, Ari. We'll now open up the floor for questions for our media. Our first question will come from Kim Doss. Ari, um, this is Kim Doss from Arizona Desert Swarm. Do you guys take it personal that people were questioning your offense? Oh, all the time. Anything someone says about our team, we take it personal and we show them literally the next game. Next question comes from Troy Hutchinson. So, Eric, can you talk about the defensive energy out there tonight? You guys caused 19 turnovers and had 28 points off of those turnovers. Yeah, um, <clears throat> we know that our identity is on the defensive end. So, you know, we it starts our offense, and we know we have to be aggressive. You know, they have a tremendous point guard, very skilled and solid. And so it started with us. We had to lock her down, and um, I think we did a great job tonight. Next question comes from Gary Graves. Yeah, Gary Graves from the AP. Uh, obviously, you know, with, with your scoring tonight, uh, did you have a green light, or was that just something that just kind of developed over the course of the game, um, you know, that, that you could just take that many shots? Um, <laughs> um, I mean, I was feeling it. I'm, I know that Coach Barnes is not going to stop me from shooting. I know that she's always going to encourage me to keep shooting, and um, my teammates kept doing it as well. So, I mean, and I kept telling her, I was like, I'm feeling it. So, I mean, she didn't say no. So, I would say I had the green light tonight. Next question comes from Donnie Woods. Yeah, Donnie Woods with World Exposure Report. What did you eat today? I mean, you've scored double figures in 90 straight games, the longest active streak in the nation, and 31 points on the most by an Arizona player in an NCAA tournament game since 2000. Were you surprised at how easy you were able to score in the first half? And what does this mean for you to take this team to the program's first Elite Eight? <laughs> Um, yikes. <laughs> um, I wasn't surprised how I was scoring. Um, I'm confident in my abilities, and once I get going, I'm hard to stop, and I think I'm hard to stop as it is, and I'm not being cocky at all, but I'm just confident in what I can do. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm just excited. Um, I'm liking how things are looking, and um, like I said, my teammates, they're stepping up at the right time. We're playing well together offensively and defensively, and so... Hey, the sky's limit right now, and um, we're here, like Coach said, we're here for the long haul. We do not want to go home, so it's do or die, and we want to get to the championship game. Next question comes from Javier. Javier Morales, All Sports Tucson. Hey, Ari, um, your your defense set up your offense again. Uh, it, did you see on film their size? They have more size than you guys, but you wore them down. Can you talk about that? Oh, yeah. Um, that was the game plan, was to play solid defense, tenacious defense, and run. I mean, that was a game plan. We know that in the, the span of their two games, they played 84 minutes, uh, and they played seven players. So that was a game plan just to run. And we did a great job. We was looking for each other, and then we were converting. Next question comes from Lindsay. Hey, Ari. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. During the game, I was texting back and forth with Chantel at The Athletic about how you all were feeling yourselves. You were playing so well. We were communicating in uh, just Beyonce gifts. And you brought up that, you know, you guys are peaking at the right time. When I was watching you, I was thinking about those two games you played against Stanford, how bad the first one was, how much better the second one was, even though you lost. How much do you think games like that in the Pac-12 prepped you for this moment? Yeah, the Pac-12 was the best conference in the country, and um, we have – we're stacked. We have, like, multiple teams, you know, and that are really great, and that really helped us. I mean, like I said, we're ta they're a talented – like, we're a talented conference, and um, I think that just playing against talented people, I mean, hey, iron sharpens iron, and, I mean, we play – we beat a great team tonight. Um, offensively and defensively, they're great, so, I mean, that says a lot about where we're going. Next question comes from Sherry. <laughs> 
Hi, Ari. Cheryl Coward from HoopFeed. Um, you've had an interesting trajectory here in Arizona coming from Washington, but uh, since after you uh, sat out the three years, you've had a trajectory every year of taking, helping taking this team to a, a higher level, starting with the W19 championship. And now, uh, what has that meant to you um, as far as taking the risk of coming to another program? Ooh, um, that says a lot. That says I trust Coach Barnes with my life, pretty much. Um, but just, I knew what it was going to be like transferring to Arizona, and I knew um, I had to take everything with a grain of salt, and I had to be positive, knowing I was sitting out. I knew I had to get better, make my teammates better, and um, <clears throat> it's what a feeling. I'm just speechless. It's it's crazy, and it's exciting. Um, <laughs> trying not to get emotional, but uh, man, uh, nobody believed in us, and um, we're coached by a great person, an individual. She's like a, a big sister to us slash mother, and it's just, it's exciting. Um, just the other coaching staff, too. Give props to them. I mean, it's been a, it's been amazing, and it's been a wonderful ride, and, but it's not over yet. Next question goes to Jay. Ari, how, how much of the defense was focused on number five, Nixon? She scored 35, including the game winner the other night. Was she a focus? I mean, was that sort of, was that where the defense started, or, or was, it, was it just across the board? I would say it was across the board, but um, Coach Barnes challenged us to win our defensive matchups tonight. Don't let them score. And um, I take everything personal. Um, I have the mentality nobody's going to score on me or go by me, so I took it personal. She's a really good guard. Uh, I give her credit, a lot of props. But um, if we wanted to win, I knew that I had to shut her down. She's a primary ball, ball handler, and it starts with her. So, I mean, I had to lock her down. Next question comes from PJ. Hi, Ari. This is PJ from the Arizona De uh, Daily Star. And, um, you know, in that, at the end of the third quarter, you hit that three um, where it sort of bounced up and then it went in. And um, did you feel at that moment that that was it? That, sure, you guys still had another quarter to play, but that was sort of, the moment where maybe you felt it? Um, I felt it in the first half, honestly. I mean, although, like, the score was close, I mean, we controlled the tempo. We controlled the game, the whole game. I mean, Texas A&M only led one time, I think it was like 10 to 4. But, I mean, I knew once I started hitting and my teammates started hitting in our defense, I knew it was the moment. And um, I had no doubt that we were, we were going to lose. Um, I knew we were going to win at all times. But, you know, we did a great job of controlling the tempo in the game. Next question goes to Doug. Hey, Ari, Doug Feinberg, DAP. You mentioned before how you came back to season to do something special in Arizona. Well, clearly you have, and you still have ways to go still, potentially. W what does it mean to get this team to the regional final for the first time ever? It means a lot, and um, I just want to thank God. I mean, without him, this wouldn't be possible, but um, I'm proud of these ladies that I'm, are, like, alongside of me. Um, we put in the work. Um, you know, through this weird, you know, year, um, we control the week in control. And um, I'm just I'm just so happy. And um, we're not done yet. Like Coach said, we haven't arrived. I mean, we still have work to do. And um, I believe we can go all the way. Next question goes to David. Okay. Next question goes to Chantel. Hey, Ari, this is Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. I feel like it's kind of appropriate that both Lindsay and my questions are about you guys hitting your stride at the right time. I feel like that's something that we hear in sports all the time in media is, you know, we're peaking at the right time or we're hitting our stride at the right time. But I'm curious what goes into that, especially when you think about this season. There were so many factors that sort of feel like inherently they would go against that. You guys have paid, played two-thirds the number of games you'd normally play in a typical season at this point. Like, how are you guys hitting your stride at the right time right now? Focusing uh, on one opponent at a time, um, you know, in practice, getting better, making each other better, um, staying the course and staying diligent and resilient. Um, I think our coaches have done a great job putting us in great positions. And, you know, I'm playing alongside some coachable people. And, um, you know, we're just focused. We're really hungry. And, you know, um, we want to do something special. And I think we have the chance to. Next question goes to David Kelly. Ari, the shooting percentage on the season was 38%. In the postseason, you're shooting 53%. 
So, so what do you think the difference is? Why are more shots going in for you? Are you? Do you feel like you're doing anything different for more shots to go in than what you were doing throughout the regular season? Uh, I think I'm letting the game come to myself. Um, I'm not forcing shots. I'm taking what the defense is giving me. Um, and I'm setting my feet more, making sure my mechanics is right. And, um, yeah, pretty much, you know, nothing really different, but just not trying to force a lot, letting the game come to me. Next question goes to Michelle. Harry, you talked about how much uh, Coach Barnes meant to you. What ways do you think she's helped make you a better player and, and, and inspired you? Uh, just challenging me um, on and off the court, putting me in positions, you know, that are going to happen in game. And um, she lets me call the shots. Um, she helped me read, read the game um, the year I set out. And, you know, she's continuously helping me. Um, and like I said, I mean, if you have a relational person like a coach, you'll run through walls with them or, or for them. And um, I trust her and, hey, she trusts me. And so I'll do anything for her. Time for two more questions. Next question goes to Alec. Do you think this is the best game you've played in an Arizona uniform? I will say it's one of them. Um, I think that Texas game was a big one. Yeah, like she said, it's something about Texas, but uh, I might say this might be the number one. Um, this game meant a lot. Uh, a lot was at stake. Nah? So I will say, yeah, that was probably the biggest game. Final question goes to Troy. So, Ari, uh, can you just talk about uh, after the buzzer went off, seeing all the fans and Coach Fish and Dave Peaky in the stands, being there to watch you guys celebrate this moment. I didn't even know Coach Fish was here, but um, that that means a lot. I, they support us, and that's amazing. They they empower us. They support us, and um, I love it. It doesn't get any better than that. And so we're just gonna keep try to uh, win for them. We're gonna play with our hearts, knowing that they're out there cheering for us. Eric, congratulations on an outstanding game, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Next up, be joined by Coach Barnes. Once again, if you do have any questions, we ask that you please utilize the raise your hand feature to get in queue for Coach. Ouch. Coach Barnes, thank you so much for taking some time to join us and congratulations on the big win. If you would please start us out with an opening statement about the game. Um, this was, we just beat a really good team. Um, you know, Gary Blair is a legend. Um, you know, he's, he's an amazing coach. He's been here so many times. He has so much, so much experience. He always has a competitive team that's capable of winning a championship. Um, so we knew this was a very tough game. Um, and I'm proud of the way we played, but we beat a really good team that could have won a championship. But I'm proud of how we showed up today. I think, um, you know, in our room, we believed in each other. We believed that this was, this was possible. We weren't satisfied with being in the Sweet 16. And, um, you know, Ari led the way. And, but other people stepped up around her and made some really big plays. And I'm just proud of our defensive effort. I'm proud of our, um, our pressing. We, we really put pressure on a and I think it affected them. Um, and I'm just, I'm just so happy with how we played. We played with our hearts. We won the 50-50 balls. We did all those little things. So I'm just really proud of how our team played today. Coach, thank you so much for those comments. We'll now open up the floor for questions from our media. Our first question comes from Lindsay. Hey, Adia, Lindsay Schnell, hey, USA Lindsay. Today. Congrats. Thanks. Um, I was thinking tonight about when you guys moved Ari off the ball and you had her play more of the two. You really seem to excel in your offense then. How much harder is it, do you think, to stop her when you don't know if she's going to be dominating the ball or coming at you off the wing? I think she's very hard to start, stop either way. I think um, when she was running the one, I think they had a really tough time with the long balls. Um, and then bringing her at the two, you have to guard her. She demands a lot of attention. So, I mean, Shane is also really good at going downhill. So I think Shane and Ari were a, a terrific combination today and very, very hard to guard. And then when you have Sam hitting shots and making big plays, just stretching the defense, um, they were tough. But yeah, decided to move Ari off the ball a little bit and um, I, it had success. Next question goes to Doug. Hey coach, Doug Feinberg, AP. Congrats on the win. Thank you. What does it mean as a 
lifelong wildcats, so to speak, to get this team now somewhere they've never been before? I mean, it's amazing. Um, you know, when I think of Arizona, everything started there for me. Um, when I first signed at Arizona, we were not a good program. Um, they hired Joan, who had had success and went to the Final Four with, when she was at Long Beach. They hired Joan to build a program. And I believed in Joan, had a connection with her, and there were seven freshmen, and we did something special. First year, growing pains, and then just kind of got better. So really the same trajectory as we had now with me. It's, they're, they're parallel. Um, so it means a lot. It means a lot because it's where everything started for me as a player. Um, everybody wants their dreams to go back to their, their alma mater and do something special. So uh, we always talk about leaving our legacy, and, you know, we've done that. And I'm just proud of this team. Um, you know, we've been resilient. This has been a tough year with COVID. It's been different. It's been hard. There's been a lot of adversity. But we've stayed mentally tough. We've stayed together as a family. We don't just say family. We are a family. Um, and there's ups and downs of family, but we found a way to get better throughout the year, and we're peaking at the right time, and that's what winning a championship's all about. You get hot at the right time. I remember um, at Washington going to the Final Four, we got hot at the right time and did that, and I, I feel like we're playing our best basketball right now, and um, you know, I think it's just the beginning for us. Next question goes to Troy. Hi, Troy Hutchison, Thanks, All Troy. Sports Tucson. Uh, Coach, obviously, Ari had a great game with 31 points, yeah. but you had eight different scores uh, score the basketball tonight. Can you talk about the versatility of your team? Um, yeah, I think that a lot of people have questioned our offense, and it's it's really frank. It's quite irritating um, because it's not who we are. We are a very good defensive team. We are going to grind you out. We are going to put pressure. We're going to make it ugly. We're going to turn you over, and then that creates our offense. That's our personnel. Um, you know, Ari can score at will, and she can score a lot of points, but a lot of times there's 10 feet in the paint. So, um, you know, we, we knew that defensively we felt that A&M hadn't, hadn't been pressured like the way we were going to pressure, and we were able to convert. And I think, you know, obviously on the back of Ari, um, Ari had an amazing first half. She was unstoppable um, just off the pick-and-roll situations, getting to the rim. She had a great a great night. Um, but then if you look at people like Sam, she, Sam, Sam just fills the stat sheet. Um, she's incredible. She is one of our most valuable players. She hits threes. She always guards um, a, a tough guard. Um, she plays the one, two, three, four, five for us. She runs the offense. She does so many things. Um, she's so valuable. She's hard to have off the floor. But I thought everybody stepped up at different times. Everybody played their part. Shana came in, went downhill right away, got to the free throw line. Um, Trinity and Kate, offensively, they were a little bit undersized, but then they got huge rebounds, hit a big, hit big threes, made big plays. So everybody did their part. And we're playing some of our best basketball and peaking at the right time. And we always talked about that's what we wanted to do um, in the tournament. And remember, all you guys, I don't know if you guys remember, we've been to the NIT. This is uncharted territory. We've never been here. Everybody we're facing has been here, you know, multiple times. We've never been to the tournament. Last year, we were supposed to go to the tournament. We were going to host the first two rounds, and then COVID happened. So we don't have the experience. So this is all new for us. So I'm even more proud of how we've handled everything. We didn't get rattled. We took their punches. We fought back. We got stops and scored when we needed to. Um, so I, I thought we played a really good game. We beat a really good team that's coached really well. Next question comes from Kim. Um, Kim Doss from Arizona okay. Desert School. Um, I saw a tweet from LaBrittany. How, what does it mean to see, you talked about alums coming back and wanting them around. What does that mean to see those alums, you it, know? It means a lot. LaBrittany drove here. Um, she said she can't stay because she's got to, um, she has to go to work on Monday, but it means a lot. My goal at Arizona is to make it um, a player's program, just like, you know, on the men's side. Um, I watched, and I was assistant coach at Washington, what Lorenzo Romar did and had, how he had all the former NBA players back, how they worked out at Arizona, um, or how they worked out at Washington, and how he just embraced that. He would have pickup games, and he would use um, NBA players to mentor his players. So I am doing that at Arizona. Um, creating a bond that I didn't have when I when I first graduated. I, I didn't really wasn't in touch with Arizona. So it's my goal to bring these former players back, to touch our team, to um, if they're playing pro overseas, I want them to work it out in our facilities, those things. That's what I'm creating, and that's important to me. Um, I want it to be like that. I want them to want to come back. I want them to meet us on the road. I want them to come talk to our kids. I want 
if you know there's a d alumni, it's a doctor, former player, I want her to inspire the next doctors on my team. All, all those things, I think that's what it's all about. So having the Brittany in the stands was so meaningful. Um, having former players, you know, text me and um, feel a part of this program is very meaningful to me. And it is very important to create that, um, you know, environment at Arizona. Next question goes to David. Hey, Adia, David Kelly, News 4 Tucson. Hey, just why do you think more shots are falling for Ari? Because, you know, she shot 36% or 38% during mm -hmm. the season, but she's shooting 53% here um, in the postseason. Great players show up on a big stage. Um, that's what they do, and that's what she does. Um, you know, she's we're peaking at the right time as a team. Um, she is letting the game come to her. She is not forcing shots. Um, I mean, she was 12 for 21. And that's a pretty darn good stat line um, with, I think, only one turnover. And that's something she, she really looks at. She doesn't want to turn the ball over. Um, she's running our team, and she's a player with the ball a lot. So uh, for her to be able to do that, it's 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 amazing. Um, and what's more amazing, there are a lot of good players in the country nationally, but there are not a lot of great players who are good on both ends. She is phenomenal on all the offensive end. She's hard to guard. You have to put two or three people at her, or you have to have multiple people in the paint. And then defensively, she presses the ball for 39 minutes a game. So to, be, to have the energy she has on offense, I don't know how she does it. Um, she would play 40 if I didn't give her a minute here and there. <laughs> um, but that's who she is, and that's what makes her unique, and that's what makes her special. That's why um, she's the best point guard in the country. And um, to me, she proved that in the tournament. And she, there is, there is no other player that has impacted their team more than Ari has impacted Arizona. There's other players that are really good, and they've done a lot of great things, but they have a lot of other, they have All-Americans next to them or a multiple 40% three-point shooters. We don't have that. So, um, you know, she takes us on her back and takes us a long way, and other people step up. She, has, she believes in her teammates. She sets them up. Sam made huge plays. Sam had huge blocks. Um, Helena came in, had huge plays. Trinity, Kate, everybody's playing hard for her, and um, we're peaking at the right time. And she's stepping up on the big stage when she should, and that's why she's the best in the country. Next question goes to Javier. Hey, Adia. Hi. Um, you, you know this program as much as anybody or more than anybody, and you know where it's come, where it's been. Uh, just personally, just you, what, is this, what does this mean to take this program somewhere it's never been? I mean, it means the world. Um, I'm just so proud. I knew today would be a really tough game. I thought we were capable of winning. I, I didn't know, you know, you know how we were going to show up. We've never been here. It's, uh, you know, it's not that there's pressure, but we were the underdogs. Um, and, you know, it's, it, they're a really good team. Um, you know, they're one of the best in the SEC. They're coached by a legend. Um, so we knew it was going to be tough, but we just fought it out. We talk about winning five-minute wars. We play in five-minute increments at a time. Um, so we want to win everywhere. We didn't look at the overall score. When we were up 10, 13, we didn't look. We said, win the next five minutes. I thought we had huge defensive plays. I thought, um, you know, we're playing some of our best basketball at the right time. And that's what it's about. And that's how you win championships. So um, just happy we're not satisfied with going to Elite Eight. Um, you know, this is uncharted territory, so we have nothing to lose. No one in the country expected us to even be in the Elite Eight. Um, when they talked about the region, no one even considered us. We weren't even in the conversation. So uh, in the room, in the Arizona room, we believe in each other, and that's all that matters. And, um, you know, that's what we're going with. And we fight for each other. We play hard. We play with passion, grit. Um, we don't take plays off. And that's, um, that's why we're having success. Next question goes to PJ. Hi, Adia. It's PJ from the Arizona Daily Star. <laughs> Um, and you know I'm going to ask this question. As the game, the last seconds are ticking off, what are the first things that come to your mind? That we just beat a really good team and we're going to the Elite Eight. Um, just looking around, um, really happy with how we played, happy with the manner. We came out prepared. Um, our team executed the game plan, did every single thing I asked at every time, um, played with their hearts and um, did all the things that we said we would do. Um, so with, when they're able to execute that, like, it feels good. Um, when I see them correcting each other on little things that I've been correcting them on the whole year, it feels good as a coach. And it, it's more meaningful for me because just five, this is my fifth year at Arizona. When I took the job, it was a bad job. 
Um, everybody said, don't take it. Like, I don't think, I don't know if anybody said take the job. All my mentors, friends, they're legend in the, in the game, said don't take it, it's a bad job, you can't win, it's hard to recruit there. Um, we did it, I mean, we were like 300 in the RPI. And now, um, just to turn it around and be doing something special, going to the Elite Eight when no one would have thought. We, you know, we didn't get tournament experience last year. And to just be doing it, I'm just so proud. And um, we play in the best conference in the country. The Pac-12 has prepared us for this. Night in and night out in the Pac-12, we're playing teams like Stanford, UCLA, um, you know, uh, great teams, Oregon State, Oregon. And so coming, you know, and, and, and playing SEC team is, is just different, but we're prepared for that. And so I'm just so happy that I'm doing it with the kids I'm doing it with who came to Arizona on a leap of faith. There was no, there was no success within the last 10 years. We were not a good program. And they came, they took a chance, they believed in me, they believed in Arizona, and they believed that one day we'll do something special. So Sam's first year, she cried all the time. I know she thought about leaving. Um, we won six games. Aerie sat on the sideline that year, you know, talking about we're gonna be better, you know, but it was hard to have, she was watching us. She had never lost that much in her life. Um, so to turn that around, win the WNIT, get Tucson backing us, selling out, and then to not go to the tournament last year because of COVID, which that was devastating, and then to come here without any experience and go to the Elite Eight, it's amazing. And it's all from these young ladies that believed in Arizona and believed in themselves when no one else did. So that's why it's more special to me. Next question goes to Greg. Uh, Dee, I just wondered after your film study, what did you positively, positively, absolutely think had to happen for you to win? I think that we had to play phenomenal defense. Um, I knew that we had to turn them over. I didn't think that they had handled a lot of um, pressure like we give pressure. So I um, knew we had to have really good pick and roll defense and had to be able to hit some shots. Um, you know, obviously I didn't know if Aerie would have 31 points. But I knew we had to hit some threes because I knew they were going to congest the play and play, pay percentage, play percentages. And so, um, you know, we faced a lot of congestion in the paint and we were able to hit some shots. So, um, but, but had to have a solid defensive game because that's how we create our offense. And, um, and then just hit some big shots and people step up at the right time and we did that. But we had to do those things in order to win because they're, they're a really good team. Have time for a few more questions for Coach. Next question comes from Michelle. Yeah, Coach Barnes, this is Michelle Vopel from ESPN.com. You Hi, talked Michelle. about un uncharted waters. Um, it, it's interesting because this regional final is going to be two programs that, that have never been to an Elite Eight before. And actually some parallels. The last two WNIT champions, obviously you and Terry, um, took programs that people, like you said, didn't think were, could, could, could get here. Can you talk about what that means for women's basketball to have two young coaches like you guys be in the Elite Eight and, and also – Two, two, if you will, two schools known for men's basketball had, with so much success on men's basketball and now being headliners in women's basketball. It means a lot. Um, it means a lot because, you know, we haven't been there. And I think that it's it's special. And, yes, both both programs are, um, you know, really good on the men's side. And I know Arizona, the, the women's – on the women's side, they've been kind of sleeping for a long time. We kind of just woke them up the last couple of years. But it just means a lot. I think, um, you know, they have a little bit more experience being in a tournament than we do. But um, th we have nothing to lose. We're, people didn't think we'd be here. So I think that, you know, we both have, have changed the programs. And um, they're a really good team. But I think at this time of year, it's survive in advance. So for us, it's like we don't care who we're playing next. Um, we knew we know every team we have respect for. We know every team is really good. So for us, it was kind of like, you know, we're on to next. Now we're all Indiana. Um, you know, we're not looking at anything else. We're just focused on that. We know it's going to be a tough game. But all these games at this time of year are tough. And I always talk about in the game, it's not the last possession. It's the, the missed 50-50 ball in the first quarter. It's the missed box out. It's the, um, it, it's the little things that matter. So um, one day at a time, we're going to watch some film tonight. It's going to be light. Walk through tomorrow, obviously, for both teams. And then we just go out and play. But I'm happy because, you know, we're, we're peaking at the right time. But it is uncharted t territory. But um, I, I think it doesn't matter because we're playing some of our best basketball. So I, I don't mind this uncharted territory. And honestly, before the game, I didn't know if we'd be a little bit tight. But um, that's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a look in their eyes that's a look of confidence. I'm seeing um, 
you know, that they are, they are ready to go to war. I'm seeing that they believe in what I'm saying and what I'm asking them to do. And there's no question. They look me in the eye and, and um, they're ready. So I'm ready to go to war with this team. I wouldn't choose it any different way with any other team. And, you know, we're ready for the next game. Time for two more questions. This next question comes from Troy. So, Coach, you were talking about the support of Tucson here locally, but uh, I'm sure you've seen it on social media and whatnot all throughout this tournament run. But tonight, after the final buzzer, seeing Dave Hickey, Robbins, and Coach Fish, who just got done with football practice, flying out there, uh, what what is that feeling like to have that kind of support? It's amazing. Um, you know, for Jed Fish, who's been amazing since he's been at Arizona, I think he is perfect for what Arizona stands for, what we're all about. And, um, you know, he's like a biggest fan. His family's the biggest fan. But for a football coach to come down to, to, to um, San Antonio from Tucson after practice to support the women's team, it means a lot. Like, I am so appreciative. I think he's amazing. So thank you to him for taking the time to do that. I think at most universities, um, a women's basketball team, you don't even see the football coach. <laughs> you usually aren't at the same meetings. You don't even really have a relationship. And it's been opposite of that at Arizona. But Arizona is a special place. Uh, we are like a family. Coach Miller and I, um, Coach Candrea, I have amazing legendary coaches right down the hall, and we help each other. And that's what makes Arizona special. It's not relationships like at other schools. It is different. And the proof of that is Jed Fish coming. Um, president Robbins, a president of the school, you know, flew down for the first game, flew back, flew back down for the second game, flew back. I'm now here for the third game. It means a lot. They support me and, and love what we're doing. And then Dave Hickey to come here and do the same thing. And some of our biggest donors, um, you know, they support women's basketball. And at a lot of places around this country, women's basketball is not supported. It's all about men's basketball. At Arizona, it's not like that. Um, they support me. They believe in what I'm doing. And um, I would not have been able to build the program without the support of, you know, my administration and the president of the school. So... I'm fortunate. I know it's not normal in every place. And I, you know, I have a lot of friends that coach in this business and they don't have support. And it's very hard to be successful when you don't have support. So um, I have it in Arizona. I'm fortunate. And, you know, I, I love, I love what they do. I love how they treat me. And I love that um, they support our program. Coach, we appreciate your time. Thank you. and we for a little bit. We, we do appreciate your time and congratulations on an outstanding win. Thank you. This concludes our media availability for Arizona, and we thank all of our media for participating.